how's it going out there? So, uh, on a little break from touring uh, Clone of the Universe, wanted to talk about the first two songs on the album. And starting with the song Intelligent Worship. Uh, I believe at one time that was actually in the running for a title of the record. So, uh, probably a good song to start it off. Uh, there's not really a lot of really complicated stuff going on here in this song. A lot of the beat just kind of follows what the riff is doing. And in the main sections in the verse, uh, there are some fills that kind of go into the chorus section uh, in the middle of the chorus, uh, which is fun, just really fast ones to kind of get those off and uh, in between lyric lines and as transitions. So I wanted to demonstrate some of that in this first part right here and show you how the, uh, the bass drum part uh, kind of follows the main riff. So, Here's that section, and uh, it goes like this. Okay, so the bridge section, the cowbell part. Uh, this is obviously something that you really need to include on uh, your album, the first song on your album, because you're getting this nice hand hammered, <laughs> loud Tommy Lee sounding cowbell. It's actually the Kenny Aronoff uh, hand hammered cowbell, probably the loudest cowbell that I've ever used, uh, which is great because you need to cut through all the Foo Marshall stacks. So this section um, is a really fun section to play, obviously, and um, it's just the cowbell kind of keeping the straight quarter note through the whole thing, and um, a little bit of left hand action going on with accents on the hi-hat, and again, bass drum following along with the main riffs in this section until the end of it. So I'm gonna demonstrate that for you right now.
so now we move on to the second song on the record, I've Been Hexed. This is a song that we've been playing uh, mostly every night on tour. It's a really good one live, and uh, the beat itself actually presents a little bit of a challenge just as far as tempo goes. You uh, really have to make sure that I get this right. Uh, it can be erring on the side of too slow or too fast. Really a good barometer for me when I'm playing this song is if I'm playing the beat and I look out and I see people doing this, then I know it's in the right place. But you don't have that when you're recording it in the studio, so it's really just about keeping that nice space and the groove in between uh, what the riff is doing, uh, which again, uh, I'm kind of following on the bass guitar here where Brad is playing uh, something that's similar to this. <laughs> So that beat is, you know, it, it works pretty well with just a really basic bass, bass guitar part, uh, bass bass guitar part, that's right. And uh, But I do get to kind of play around with the transition uh, where instead of just going one, been trying to do that live and it seems to work pretty good and uh, in general the song is just really a, a, a very sort of like lumbering groove but you really have to watch the timing on it so I'm going to demonstrate just the main verse and chorus section in the chorus section too there's a little bit of a turnaround on where the snare placement is so watch for that as well Okay, this is also a song where uh, there's a few different fills in it uh, that kind of run throughout the sections, uh, most notably sort of in the middle section uh, where there's a little bit of a guitar solo and then there's just some flams going on over here on the floor toms. Um, again, sort of following along to the riff. The fill that I get asked about a lot in this song is the one that's the very end, uh, what our uh, engineer, extraordinary friend Andrew Giacomuchus who uh, helped us with Gigantoid and uh, with this record Clone of the Universe. This is the fill he calls the coast to coast. And so, uh, meaning just going all the way from here all the way around and uh, you know, it's like being a kid in a candy store. So originally the fill I wanted to use for this song uh, on this section is the one that I ended up using in Nowhere Left to Hide where it's just you're splitting uh, two strokes between hands and feet, and just going all the way down. But uh, it ended up working better in the section of Nowhere Left to Hide in the breaks. So for this one, because I had a shorter space of time to do it in, uh, it ended up being just 30 second notes all the way down the toms uh, into the end. And so the timing of it has to be pretty precise. And uh, it's definitely one of those things where if I think about it, I'll screw it up. So I'm going to demonstrate it and uh, how to execute it over the toms. Um, again, I've kind of set myself up a little bit of a challenge because I've got to skip over my hi-hat to do this, whereas most people that have toms in a row, uh, they're just coming down. So um, again, <laughs> if I think about it, I'll screw it up. So here's how to break it down and then how to execute it in real time.
right, so that's how you break that one down. And uh, those are the first two songs off Clone of the Universe. And coming next is the last song on the record. The big one, the 18 minute monster known as El Mastro Atomico. So keep an eye out for that. We'll be back on the road in November with a couple of shows in September as well. Uh, and here's some studio footage of us recording I've Been Hexed. Enjoy it.